Hello again and welcome. Michael Pozzola here. I'd like to welcome you to this edition of the Value Capping Rant. And this is the 2015 Breeders' Cup Value Capping Rant. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Michael Pozzola. I am author of the best-selling book, Handicapping Magic, co-author of the classic Pace Makes the Race. I am credited with being the creator of the original online racing form, and I am currently publisher of the Post Time Daily, which I think are the best past performances anywhere. I'm also publisher of the software um, package Black Magic, Ultimate Handicapping Software, and Value Capper Black Magic. Magic Handicapper 2.0, uh, which is forthcoming. And for those of you who've been waiting patiently, thank you for your patience. It'll be out in a few months, and believe me, it'll be wor worth waiting for. You know, very often on these kinds of videos, it's like, well, come and watch my free video, and then they try to sell something to you. Well, I, I'm not going to do that. As a matter of fact, for those of you who are watching who think, oh, wow, this Black Magic software that you're showing us today and you're using it to analyze the Breeders' Cup races, I'm going to tell you that my advice is not to get it now and to wait until Value Capper comes out in a few months. I know that's against every kind of business principle, you know, you sell, sell, sell and all of that. Well, I'm telling you not to. Hold on, wait until the new Value Capper comes out because it's going to be a game changer. Now, Let's get to the Breeders' Cup races, and I'm going to go uh, do something different this year, and this is in response to a lot of your comments. One is, um, hey, enough with the philosophy, and two, get to the races and tell us who you like. Well, um, I'm not really going to do either of those, so, <laughs> but I'm going to respond to that, and you'll notice that in my approach that I'll show you, I'm going to be using what I call value capping. And value capping means really looking at the value issues of the race as opposed to who is going to win. Because no one knows. No one knows. You know, will American Pharaoh win the classic? I don't know. He sure won the triple crown. And then he lost last time. So you can't really know. You can know if you're getting a good price. And that's why you need a good odds line. Black Magic makes a great odds line. Value Capper is going to make a phenomenal odds line. And so those are very, very helpful to have. The other thing I'm going to do this year is I'm going to take you over my shoulder. I'm going to show you how I initially look at the races. As I am speaking to you, tonight is October 27th. It's Tuesday night. The past performances are out. So if I'm looking at a card or cards of races in advance, like I'm doing now, I don't have scratches, I don't know what the weather is, I don't know um, anything other than this is what's presented. And I thought it would be interesting for you to look over my shoulder as I look at these races for the first time, without preparation, without going through a lot of folder all, just looking at how I would look at them. And I'm gonna go through them quickly, and I'm gonna give you my first impressions, using the Blackmagic Ultimate Handicapper software. So, if you're ready now, let's go and look at the races from Keeneland for October 30th and 31st, 2015, the 2015 Breeders' Cup. Okay, so here we are at Blackmagic Handicapper software screen. And... I'm doing something which I've never done before, which is look at the races for the first time with you to give you an idea of how I look at it. Now, again, today is October 27th. It's Tuesday. It's the Tuesday before the Friday of the first day of Breeders' Cup. So I don't have scratches. I don't have weather and so forth and so on. And I've just downloaded the Keeneland races. I am going to go and start with the first of the Breeders' Cup race. Uh, races, which is the Keeneland sixth race. Uh, that's the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf. Now, at first, it looks okay, um, and there's a horse on top that's 30 to 1, uh, Manhattan Dan, and the 15 Sheik of Sheiks, Manhattan Dan. Yeah, something doesn't look right. So, if we open this up, you know that in these turf races at Breeders' Cup, there's a lot of um, 
foreign horses. And as a matter of fact, the morning line favorite is the 13 Simric, 7 to 2. And as you see, he's got no starts in the United States. In fact, as I recall from reading about this, there were several races. Yeah, Shogun um, also has no ratings. Um, Simric didn't have ratings, as we saw. The great uh, a horse from Great Britain raised the bar. And Birchwood also doesn't have any ratings. So there are three horses or four horses with that are just basically unknowns. We don't know how the... Oh, hit it a bomb. Nine to two. So we've got the two morning line, th morning line favorites or two of the morning line favorites that have never run. And it hit it a bomb is an Aiden O'Brien horse that's two for two. And what's it going to do? So we've got these unknowns. Look, I can't be, and I don't think anyone could be an expert in all different fields. I'm a pace handicapper. And that's what the numbers are based on mostly don't have pace numbers. I can't assess that much of the field. I'm finished. I'm done. Now, if you ask me uh, as a fan, as someone who wants to quote unquote play, as someone who's not an investor, sure. You know, what does this Manhattan Dan look like? Well, it doesn't look, you know, horrible. I mean, he's uh, had five starts. He's won one, finished second in one, and finished third in two of them. Um, is he a champion? Gosh, I don't know. He's three for three in the money on the turf. He's the lone early in the race. Uh, if we look at acupressure, uh, he owns both calls in acupressure. So sure, at something like 20 to one, not as a prime bet because we've got all those unknowns. Okay, that's my initial reaction to this race. So let's go on and look at another. Let's look at Keeneland race seven. And here we have an interesting situation. We have an arc six. In other words, that heavier red line is the horses that, uh, it delineates the horses above random from below random. So there are six horses above random, which is not bad for a Breeders' Cup race. The only issue is the very top of the line is the even money favorite in this. This is the, the Las Vegas Breeders' Cup Turf Mile. And um, unfor no, it's not. It's a Las, Breeder Las Vegas Breeders' Cup Mile. It's not on the turf, actually. Uh, when an even money is, a horse is like that strong on the top, I'm always wary. Now, it's on a layoff and then... Well, does Todd Pletcher bring him back after layoff? And after all, he won on June 19th after the layoff. And uh, again on November 16th uh, last year after the layoff and so forth and so on. It's, it's an iffy proposition betting against horses like that. I don't like to do it. If I were to look at a horse, I would say, well, the five is on a layoff as well. Leah um, coming from Woodbine. Uh, and then there's Red Vine, who is the fulcrum in the race. Um, six to one on the line, seven to one on contention, which is what I think he'll run at. Uh, six to one on the morning line. Yeah, sure. Um, how do I figure this out? It's a feel that you get. So Liam's map looks to be fairly strong, even though on a layoff, I've got a horse that I'm making six to one. I'm not going to touch this unless it's uh, 14 or 15 to one, this red vine, I mean. Now, if you want to go into Never Never Land here, you've got Mr. Z, who's 50 to one morning line, just finished uh, 12th in the, uh, I mean, 12 lengths back in the Pennsylvania Derby. Uh, you've got Valid, you've got War Story. I mean, for me, this is basically a pass unless they give me a great price on Red Vine. Um, you know, I might look to play around with some um, exotics and so forth. But that's my initial that's my initial response to the race. I don't really want to bet Liam's map. Uh, certainly don't want to uh, bet against him. He's uh, never been uh, worse than second uh, in some pretty darn good races. You know, won the Woodward, darn near won the Whitney. Um, uh, yeah, sure. Red Vine, 15 to 1. Keeneland, race 8, the Breeders' Cup Philly Juvenile. Um, this is on the turf. And 
once again, uh, the there's the top horse is the five, Ruby Notion, which is on a layoff, right? Uh, but three out of four races, and um, it's one for two on the turf. Then we've got Harmonize, who's uh, almost won all three uh, of her lifetime races. The issue again is, and how do I know this? Well, I see seven to two. I'm thinking that the morning line maker is going to make some other horses favorites. And yeah, we see these indications. We see Alice Springs, who has never started in this country. Another Aiden O'Brien horse. We've got Last Waltz, and similarly has never started in this country. We've got Illuminate, which is a really fine horse, um, written by De Tori. Uh, won four, uh, three out of four races with one second. Too many unknowns. And not only that, but even if we say, okay, we've got our unknowns, look at the top three horses that we have on the line. Two of them are morning line favorites. So we're going to take all that risk for the horses that we like being morning line favorites. Yeah, I don't think so. Bringing us to Keeneland Race 9, the Longines uh, Breeders' Cup Distaff. The very first thing that I see is that you see that thick red line beneath the horse uh, Warren's uh, Veneda. There are four, five, six, seven, eight, nine horses above random. Not only that, the line begins at nine to one. Nine to one, nine to one, nine to one, nine to one. Then 11 to one, a 12 to one. There's not much of a distinction there. Okay. Are those the quote unquote best horses? Yes, according to our numbers. But does that mean that they're worth a bet? Well, there's no real distinction. Now, the top horse, Frivolous, 9 to 1. Uh, it's 16 to 1 in contention, 30 to 1 in morning line. It does have a nice pattern. It's a type 1, meaning it won its second back and just kind of relaxed. It closed a bit in its last two races. This race is highly pressured. So might I take a shot with a sure at a high enough price? Why a high enough price? Well, my line on it is nine to one. I've got to get a bargain on this, right? I've got to get at least 18, 20 to one. And then if I'm going to try to hit a home run, I'll use it with the, the nine, the 15, the five, you know, some of those really long prices. But I, I'm really not making great a great distinction here. This would not be, if I were betting on a normal day, this would not be a solid, solid bet um, for me. Now, what kind of solid bets uh, would I make? Well, let's see if we can find one in the undercard. Uh, Officer Griffin in the first race looks really strong. Oh, here's the kind of horse I'd bet. This four horse in the second race on the undercard. Right on the top of the line, five to one on my line, 12 to one on the morning line, nine to one where I think it should be. It just had a type three, which means it came off, it came off a layoff. Showed some early speed, even though today's race is highly pressured. It must have some late to be at top of the line like that. If it goes anywhere near 10 or 12 to 1, I would take this horse. Okay, so <coughs> that's how I'm looking at it. Uh, maybe an action bet in the sixth race on Manhattan Dan. Um, Red Vine in the uh, seventh race, the uh, Breeders' Cup Turf Mile. Uh, once again, I call it the turf mile. It's just the mile. Um, I've got too many unknowns in the eighth race, the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies Turf. Uh, this race, I might go shopping around the Longines Breeders' Cup Distaff to try to make a whole bunch of money with a very small bet. So that's my first look. That's how I look at these races when I first go through them. And you, you never get to see that, so I wanted you to see that. So let's go through the um, second day of Breeders' Cup, which is Saturday, October 31st, 2015. And remember, this is four days in advance. This is Tuesday night, the 27th. Okay, here's the kind of race I love to pass. This is the Keeneland Third, the 14 Hands Winery. Now, what comes next? The Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies, I guess. And... Um, 
why do I say this is an instant pass for me? Well, one of the premises of value capping is that bet horses you like that the public shouldn't. Guess what? Our top three horses are the top three morning line favorites. So if Rachel's Valentino or Songbird wins seven to five, seven to two, even nickname at four to one, none of them are strong enough to warrant this kind of bet. I am done. I'm not interested in picking out. I'm interested in making profits at this game. All right, now we have got the Twin Spires Breeders' Cup Turf Sprint. And now we might have a chance at a value investment. And here's why. Once again, there are a lot of horses above random because there are so many darn horses in this race. Good Lord. There are, what, 16 horses in the race. And so the arc, the above random cluster, four, five, six, seven, eight horses. But we do have a good looking uh, gelding at the top of the line, Mongolian Saturday. It's the top of the line. It just paired up numbers. Uh, It keeps finishing in the money. I mean, it's a five-year-old gelding. Does it belong in this kind of company and so forth and so on? Gosh, I don't know, but let, look at its finishes. Second, 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 first, second, second. Um, at a 15, 20 to 1, um, I don't see anything really wrong with taking a shot here. Uh, this is a five and a half furlong race on the turf, and this gelding is one for one at that distance. So why not? I think it should be overlooked by the crowd. Now, I'm not going to take this horse at 8 or 9 to 1. Why? I've, he's 7 to 1 on my line. I'm going to need a really good price on this horse. But, okay, I'm going to make a little check mark to remember. And that little check mark will tell me to watch the race and to watch the board to see if I'm getting my price. Let's go to the fifth race on October 31st, 2015. This is the Twin Spires Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Sprint. Now, another big arc. I like when I only have a few horses in my arc, okay? But I got a big one. And this is a race I usually find some kind of investment in because it typically comes up as highly pressured. What does that mean? A lot of horses like to go for the lead. If you look at acupressure down here, you can see a whole bunch of horses vying for the lead in the first and second calls and they're close together well that makes sense doesn't it these are champion sprinters so at the top of the line is cavorting and if we look at her past performances we can see she's a closer okay and she's also the morning line favorite if we go a little further down we see judy the beauty the 11 that horse can close a little bit and horse it's a mare you know And then we have Wavell Avenue. I'm looking at her. She's a filly who can close a little bit. So our top three uh, fillies and mares are all closers in the race. I don't think that we're going to get anywhere near of an overlay to 7-1 on cavorting. I think she'll be the favorite in the race. Uh, Judy the Beauty, I think, should go off at eight or nine to one, there's not much of an overlay. Now, they may let Wavell Avenue go. And if so, I think I might take a make a shot here. Now, what would I need to bet it? Well, I've got it at 10 to one on my line. It looks like it can, certainly in the last couple of races, it's closed nicely. I'm going to have to get 18, 20 to one to bet on this horse. So that means I may not have a bet in the race. Now, I saw Le Verdad win her last race, and she really... Uh, ran a, a just a beautiful race, so that that mare might be uh, find its way into my trifectas and exactas. Taris looks like a bit of an early um, an early filly, but these top three also look late. That's wonderful in a highly pressured race. So I'm going to make a little check mark on that, and I'm going to put a little V. Not for vendetta, but for value, <laughs> potential value. Let's look at the sixth race. This is the Twin Spires Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf. We see that the, the horse that's right on top, uh, Dachita from Chile, has got one race in this country. It's one for one. All the rest of its races are from Chile. And as with 
Many of these long races, you look at Legatissimo from Ireland, the eight to five favorite. Eight to five favorite, this horse is a champion. It's uh, eight times first or second out of 10 races. Uh, it's uh, got these huge turf ratings. It's just, and it's never started in this country. So do you want to bet against an unknown like that? And it's not only that horse, that's, oh, that filly actually, that's unknown. We've got Miss France. As a matter of fact, there are five entries in this race without ratings. And you can scroll th through them. You don't have to have me take you through this. But I, um, I had seen, when I read about the races in the press, horse like even Bowena looks you know, looks pretty good. So you really, I don't. Anyway, I don't have pace numbers on those horses, so I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to even touch it. I'm not going to spend any time on it. I need my mental energy. Now, when you look at a race like uh, the Keeneland Race 7, this is a highly pressured race. This is the Breeders' Cup Sprint. And you might think, well, you know, I've got the horse right on top is Liberzine Liberal. Let me go and run and, and bet it. Well, take a look at this odds line. 9 to 1, 10 to 1, 10 to 1, 10 to 1, 11 to 1, 12 to 1. There's no distinction. There's nothing strong there. Okay? So, I guess you could price shop. But in my mind, I might look for closers among the top. Uh, horses and entries. The... Limousine Liberal doesn't look like much of a closer. Uh, Run Happy doesn't look. Private Zone looks like a bit of an early horse. Even Fallen <laughs> Why do they make names like this? Fallen <laughs> Whatever. Big Mocker. Big Mocker closed in its last race. That was looked like the only time. Now I'm down to a horse that I'm making 12 to 1 Stallwalker dude. And then Al Sabid, uh, maybe acupressure can help out, help out with the closers. There's a whole bunch of closers. In other words, this is a hugely confusing race. I'm not pointed to any one horse. I'm going to let this go. There are plenty of other opportunities. Let's take a look if there's going to be one in the Breeders' Cup 8th race, the Breeders' Cup Mile. Now, this is another turf race. We see, ooh, ooh, look at all these prices. Look at all these strong morning line prices on the top. Well, something's not right there. Look at all of these down here. You see Ireland, Japan, Ireland, Great Britain, Great Britain, Ireland. All the morning line favorites are down here. And guess what? They haven't started in this country. There's make-believe, impassable, time test, esoterique, uh, caracantier, um, Mondialiste, well, Mondialiste did have one start. What? I don't have the tools for this. If you want to go on breeding, if you want to go on trainer, if you want to play because it's Breeders' Cup Day, that's wonderful. Not my cup of tea. I'm in this game where I have a an edge. I would make a similar comment about the Keeneland 9th on Saturday, October 31st, as I made about the 7th. Here again, I've got a huge arc. I have 10 horses above random that I have to look at. And there's not a huge distinction. 9 to 1, 10 to 1, 11 to 1, 12 to 1, 13 to 1, and so forth. You see what I mean? And I, I just, now, who are my top two horses? The 6 and the 3. The 6 is the fulcrum. It's 9 to 1 on my line. That means if they ran the race 10 times, I said it would win once. That's not great. Would I take 25 to 1 on this? Sure. But what do you do about if the 4 goes off at 30 to 1? And then you have maybe the 16 going off. And then what do you do? Now you're stuck in confusion and all. So in this race, either a little um, action bet on the 6 horse, the fulcrum at, again, 20, 25 to 1. Or stay out and wait for the other races. The next one is the Keeneland. 10th race, which is a mile and a half on the turf. Once you get past, much past, you know, about a mile and a quarter, even at a mile and a quarter, which is the distance at which the classic is it will be run, it's hard to use pace numbers. It's a mile and a half on the turf. It's not really a pace race. And the four to five favorite, 
The colt that is seven for eight on the turf is Golden Horn. You know, it's never run in this country. It just had a beautiful win in the Lac de Triomphe at Longchamp. Uh, I'm not going to bet that horse. I'm not going to bet against that horse. I'm, I'm just going to leave that alone. Which brings us to the one everyone's waiting for, the Breeders' Cup Classic. Woohoo! Oh, guess what? American Pharaoh is second on the line. Surprisingly, Frosted is top on the line. Now, here's about all the handicapping I will do, okay? That is, why is Frosted on the line, at, at top of the line at 15-1? to 1? Let's take a look at its past performances. If you notice, the software took its top line where it won the Pennsylvania Derby. If it, you look at the master pace numbers, that 158 and 5 on the top is really a big number. Okay, if you decide that that's way out of whack, now, it's a three-year-old colt. One of two things is happening. Frosted is really improving, and it's had a couple of beautiful workouts since that race. If it's really improving, it's got a real legitimate shot to win this classic. Let's play a what-if game. Let's give it all the races that it's had in its three-year-old season. I won't go through showing you how to do that. You hit the letter W. but And it still comes up on top. And let's take out that Pennsylvania race. And now it drops down to fourth. So what's my assessment? My assessment will be based on price. If I, got, if I get 20 to 1 on Frosted, yes, absolutely, he's coming to a race. If I get six to one on Frosted, nope, I won't take him. And then I'll be much more interested in Tonalist. I hope you heard what I just said. I don't know if Frosted will beat Tonalist and American Pharaoh. I don't know if Tonalist will beat American Pharaoh. I don't know if one of the... All I know is at 20 to one, Frosted's going to be worth a shot. At six or seven to one, he won't be. And so then I'll look for another in, uh, potential uh, value investment. If I don't give Frosted that top number, guess what? Tonalist comes right on top. And Tonalist, oh my gosh, just had a wonderful win in the Jockey Club uh, Gold Cup. I mean, he was in hand. I mean, it just ran a beautiful race. And sure, I'll take him at 10 to 1. Do I think I'm going to get 10 to 1? No. And that brings us to the second horse on the line, American Pharaoh. Good luck. The morning line maker, maker made this triple crown winner six to five. I think it's going to be lower than that. Then we're down to Honor Code. Honor Code will be absolutely closing in this race. That's all this Ridgeling knows how to do. Uh, then we have Frosted. And then you've got the real long shots like Hard Aces. And Behold, well, Beholder is the mayor who's running in this. And she's just a champion. If she beats me, she beats me. Not because I've got anything against her, but she's three to one on the morning line and she's nine to one on my line. So I'm going to be looking at two of the Colts in this race. And that is Tonalist, if I can get somewhere near nine or 10 to one. And the other Colt I'll be looking at is Frosted. Uh, yes, I, in the trifectas, I will have Hard Aces, Honor Code, and American Pharaoh in there in an attempt to make some money. So that's one I'll check because I'm actually thinking if they go absolutely crazy on Beholder and American Pharaoh, um, some people have asked me, well, what do you do if you're getting, uh, you know, eight, nine to one on Tonalist and you're getting 20 to one on Frosted? In that case, I would make a two horse bet. So I'd bet them both. But remember, in Breeders' Cup, you got to look for the undercards, not just the Kingland, but all the other races that are running. So let's see if I can find one. Uh, wait a minute. Let's go back to the first race at Keeneland. Eight o'clock in the morning for you early birds. Uh, hmm. The Colt right on top, Wake Up Joe. Five to one on the line, 17 to one contention, 10 to one morning line. Um, underneath it are three horses off of layoffs. This is a highly pressured race. Look at the way this horse runs. Uh, closed, made big closes in its last two races. So I'm going to check that one for sure. 
and get up early on that Breeders' Cup morning and go and uh, bet that horse at a decent price. Why is it 15-1? to 1? Well, it's just coming from Presque Isle Downs, and it's Keeneland, and it's Breeders' Cup, and this is only a, an allowance, or whatever, whatever. Uh, give me 10-1 to 1 on the source. I'll take it in the New York Minute. So, in the Keeneland fourth race, the uh, Breeders' Cup Turf Sprint, I'm going to look at Mongolian Saturday at um, oh, 15 or 20 to 1. In the Philly and Mare Sprint, the fifth race, I'm going to take a close look at Wavell Avenue again at 20 to 1. I'm going to have the 7, 11, and 14 boxed. I'm not interested in the sixth uh, nor the seventh. I've got no distinctions, nor the eighth. Um, nor the ninth or the tenth, but the Breeders' Cup Classic, I'll really take a look at Tonalist at 10 to 1, Frosted at 15 or 20 to 1, and I definitely want to look at Wake Up Joe in that first race. So, that's my first look. That's, you just came along with me as I opened up the races and got an idea for the first time before I knew scratches or weather or anything else three days and four days before these races i hope you enjoyed that well i hope you enjoyed that that's my 2015 breeders cup value capping rant i hope it was useful for you to look over my shoulder to see how i respond to the um the races as they appear to me with the odds lines in front of me and how I'm not really trying to figure out who's going to win. I'm trying to see what will be a good value investment. And that's the huge change from stage one to stage two, from handicapping to value capping. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for listening. For those of you who uh, are um, subscribers to the Wizards Forum and Blackmagic software and all of that. Thank you for your support of each other. It's just incredible. And come and visit us if you have any questions at www.posttimedaily.com. Until next time, this is Michael Pozzola saying be well and let the bet make you. I'll see you soon.